The very first step when preparing a print server is to add Microsoft's print server role to the server. To do so, go to the server manager's snap-in. and click on roles at the top left of the window. Once there, click Add Roles on the right side of the screen and the Add Roles wizard will open. Click Next to move to the next screen. Check the box for Print and Document Services and click Next. Click Next again ensure only the print server box is checked click next and click install this will take a few minutes to process but should not require reboot afterwards once the wizard is finished click close to complete the purpose of adding this role is to add the print management snap into the server is located in Start, Admin Tools, Print Management once installed. Before we can begin creating a print object on the server, we must have a printer on the network that is available to the server. The printer should have its own unique, reachable IP address. To confirm the IP of your printer is reachable from the server, open a command prompt and ping the printer by its IP address. In our example, the IP address of the printer is 192.168.2.35. Unless ICMP is blocked or disabled on the network, or there is a network or configuration issue, this should be successful as shown in our example. Once the IP is confirmed to be reachable, we need to next install our print driver software. In this example, we will install the Xerox WorkCenter 7100 driver the Xerox Work Center 7500 driver, and the Xerox Global Print Driver software. As it is difficult to download and properly install the Xerox driver software on the server using the server's browser, we'll walk through installing three Xerox driver packages using Internet Explorer. Browse to the Trusted Sites area at Tools, Internet Options, Security, Trusted Sites. Add the following entries. Now we will download the driver packages. Browse to ftp.xerox.com forward slash support. I will start with the 7120 driver. And we will use Windows 7 x64 PCL6. Once that completes, this particular package opens as a directory of files. We'll make a copy of the files and paste them in a special directory at the root of C called Xerox drivers. And then in a special subdirectory, identifying the exact model and driver type. Now, go back to IE and go back to the main page and we'll download our next driver built-in controller Windows 7 x64 PCL6 64-bit This uh, driver install package launches a wizard. We'll choose accept and specify the path we want the files to reside. 
If the path you've specified does not exist, it will be created once you click install. UAC pop-up may occur. Choose yes. And then close the add printer wizard that opens at the end. Finally, we will download the Xerox Global Driver. Again, Windows 7 x64, PCL 6 64-bit. This driver package also comes up as a wizard. Find your path and choose install. Say yes to any UAC prompt and close the add printer wizard. We now have the drivers located at C Xerox drivers separated into individual folders. This type of organization will come in handy later. Now that the driver software is installed on the server, we will create a print object for our two test printers. To do so, open Print Management, expand the Print Servers pane on the left, expand your server object, click on Printers, right-click Printers, and choose Add Printer. Select the default Add a TCP IP or Web Services printer by IP or hostname, choose Next. Select TCP IP device and enter the IP address of your printer. My 7120 is at 2.35. Now specify a driver. We need to install a new driver and have disk. Now we need to specify our 7120 driver. Only the INF that matches should be available. Choose Open and OK. Further select the identifying model and choose Next. Now, define a printer name and share name that match exactly. Choose Next, Next. This process may take some time. Once completed, check the Print Test Page box and click Finish. Confirm your test page comes out of the printer. Next, we'll add our second printer. And this one is at 2.41. Choose the driver. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, again, we'll choose install a new driver. Have disk. Browse. Find the INF. Choose Open, click OK, select your model, Next. Again, make sure your printer name and share name match exactly. And check the boxed printer test page and confirm that's come out of the printer. At this point, the server is fully prepared for the pCanner software. Download the pCanner software at www.pcanner.com forward slash downloads. You may have to add pcanner.com to your trusted sites list. Select pcanner and pcanner for Windows North America if you're in North America. Open the package and run the setup. Unless you wish to customize the installation directory, take the defaults on the installer.
click finish to close. Now, open the primary server configuration interface P control. By default, this is located in Start, Programs, P counter for Windows, P control. I'd like to pin this to our taskbar. Expand the quick server list object on the left and expand the server. The print queues are pre populated and this is a job control view. You can right click the printer object to pause, access printer properties, and many other options. For the very first step, we need to set up the printer control service, data server service, and port, as well as create our pcanner data share. To access the server configuration screen, up at the top, choose pcanner, configure pcanner server. The machine launch should be pre-populated by its net BIOS name. Choose OK. For the very first time, this warning comes up, telling us that it needs to disable server file pooling. Choose Yes, and it will make this modification automatically. Choose OK. Once complete, choose Close. At this point, we are ready to install the printer control service, data server service, and port. Navigate to the services and ports bullet. Install the printer control service. Install the data server service. This will prompt us to create the pcanner data share. This is a small directory by default at the root of C that houses the pcanner database files. Even after years of usage, it shouldn't grow above a few hundred megabytes. Uh, so we recommend leaving it at the default path of C pcanner. It will also be shared automatically using the share name pcanner. Click create share to create the share. And that installed the data server service as well. Final component is the pcanner port. Go ahead and start the two services. And click OK. At this point, pcanner is installed, but nothing is being tracked. The next step is to add passive logging to the printers. Go back into the server configuration screen and navigate to the printers bullet. By default, both printers will be in the non pcanner printers list, as they are not being tracked. If we examine the printer properties, we see the printers under ports are using a standard TCP IP port. This is the uh, direct link between the server and the printer uh, that allows the server to send the job to the printer directly. Once we enable pcanner tracking, the standard TCP IP port will be replaced by a pcanner port, thus tracking all jobs that flow through the server share automatically. To migrate the printers into pcanner and create a pcanner port, go back to pcontrol, highlight them both, and select the pcanner IP port migrator. A new window will open. It will scan each of the printers via SNMP and determine their model type, IP address, protocol, port name, and some other information. Choose Migrate All Ports to create a new pcanner port with the naming convention pcount underscore IP address. Both show converted successfully. Close. And now we see our printers are in the pcounter printers list and are listed in green. If we go back to the printer properties of that printer, we see it's now using a pcounter port. Pcounter ports provide the same functionality as a standard TCP IP port and also track the printing as the jobs flow through the server share. If we now go back to pcontrol and right click one of the printers and choose edit pcounter configuration, or just double click it. This opens the pcanner configuration for the printer itself. Each printer can be configured differently or identically to suit the needs of the environment. By default, accounting is set to logging only, pop-up is disabled, no prices are set, color detection is disabled, no rules are set, and no policies are set. Just giving the, P, uh, the printer a pcanner port enables all of these settings. I like to call this passive logging. The print object will track who printed and how much, 
but will not interfere with the user's operation of the printer. It will also not restrict them or deny them access in any way. If I send a test page to the printer now, since it has a pcanner port, so long as the print came out successfully, that has generated us our first log entry. If we browse to see pcounter data, we should see the pcounter.log file. Thus, if we open pcounter administrator, for the very first time it may need to be pointed at your domain. Uh, once in the, your domain view, go to utility, open log file, should pre-populate the pcanner data directory. Choose the pcanner.log file and click open. This should show you your single line of usage in the report. This concludes our pcanner for Windows training video. Stay tuned to our YouTube channel for more videos.